Today in the news, Zen 3 survives a generation. We talk DDR5 and Intel is finally stable. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. So the AM4 socket is finally on its last legs. We now have the last CPU released for the platform, AKA the Ryzen 5800X3D. By the way, small tangent here, why show the new 3D vCache technology on a 5900X, the previous king of gaming? It still had a 15% boost in gaming performance with the 3D vCache, and AMD just didn't release a 5900X3D. Anyways, tangent over. So the Zen 3 based 5800X3D is the final opus of AM4. Does that mean that we jump into Zen 4 for the next generation? Well, yeah, but it looks like Zen 3 isn't finished evolving. AMD announced Rembrandt, their uh, Zen 3 Plus based APUs for notebooks at CES this year. And it looks like the technology is jumping to the AM5 socket. And for good reasons. Paul Alcorn from Tom'sHardware.com had the opportunity to talk to David McAfee, the uh, corporate VP and GM of the client channel business at AMD. And there were some interesting tidbits in their conversation. For example, when talking about APUs, McAfee said that DDR5 is the optimal choice to pair with the RDNA2 engine, which means that a DDR5 platform is required, hence socket AM5. So no more APUs for AM4. Another really big point in the conversation was AMD's wariness on the supply and availability of DDR5. McAfee said, one of the dynamics that we do think about a great deal is how and when to introduce that AM5 ecosystem and ensure that the DDR5 supply, as well as pricing of DDR5 memory is mature and something that's easily attainable for an end user. Also adding that he expects AM5 to be an enthusiast's first introduction. All of those little hints tell us a couple of things. AMD is definitely trying to time their next gen release with DDR5 supply and availability and this could affect the release date. Unfortunately, right now we have zero reason to believe that AMD is going to support DDR4 memory on uh, AM5. Intel was quite vocal on the support of the uh, older memory standard from the get-go, while with AMD, well, we got nothing. We can also tell that DDR5 seems to be really in bad shape in terms of production availability and of course, price. Right now, DDR5 costs around three to four times what DDR5 does, so yeah, yikes. Zen 4 is supposed to land on the second half of 2022. Let's just hope that DDR5 manufacturers step it up a notch. Also, with AMD, just a little thing here, Genoa, the insane epic platform with up to 96 cores on a single chip, has been pictured. Not just that, but it's been x-rayed. As you can see here, this one has two CCDs, which should equate to 16 cores. And wow, does it look empty with only 16. It also resembles the AMD renders that we saw during last year's presentation. It's pretty neat. Moving on to Nvidia, it looks like this one rumor just won't die. And I'm talking about the RTX 3080 12 gigabytes. So to recap, compared to the original RTX 3080, this model would have 3% more CUDA cores, so 8,960, and would have 12 gigabytes of VRAM instead of 10. With the memory increase, you also get a wider memory bus from 320 to 384 bit. All of that would increase the power consumption by about 30 watts for a TDP of 350 watts. Now, this wouldn't be a super or a new TI variant. Instead, it would just be a stealthy update, like a refresh. And it apparently is coming out tomorrow. So yeah, just wanted to keep you guys in the loop and we'll see if it actually materializes. Then with Intel, we have some good news. Alder Lake had a pretty rough start on the desktop market. The difference between Windows 10 and 11 performance had some wild swings, and there was a huge list of some 50 plus games that wouldn't work if you had eCourse enabled because of DRM issues. On top of that, the platform cost was pretty bad with motherboards starting at around $200 USD. Thankfully, the Windows issues have subsided with various patches. New motherboard chipsets have entered the market during CES 2022. And lastly, Intel just wrote a press release confirming that the DRM issue that caused crashes or stopped games from completely loading have finally been fixed. It took two months, but if you were eyeing an Alder Lake CPU, it should finally be safe to upgrade. 
Anyways, guys, that pretty much wraps it up for today's stories. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.